Good evening. I'm Brad Coleman, president of the AMS. And wow, it's great to see all of you here. Welcome to this year's awards ceremony. We're really honored that you are here. This year, we made a few things, changes in, the, in how we run the annual meeting. One was to move the award ceremony from Sunday night as part of the business meeting to a central spot within the week. And I, I'm amazed and thank you. It's, this is what our award ceremony should be like. We're honoring our family, our friends, our colleagues, those who helped us, those who are, are, we are going to help through their careers. So thank you for being here. It, it, I'm amazed and I'm very, very happy. Uh, yeah. Real quick, I want to thank all the committee people who worked, and particularly Kim Kluckow and Mike Henry, but all the AMS staff who really helped us and came up with this vision that we could move it to Wednesday. So thank them for their vision and their ideas so that we could have this energy tonight. But tonight, we also reflect on the legacy of these awards. Uh, looking back through their history, you can trace the evolution of our science and its impact on our world. For many of our members, these awards represent some of their highest career honors. For those of you who are just starting your careers, this is your opportunity to see that each one of us builds our career on the shoulders of others and to personally hear from the giants in our field. Let's take a moment to reflect together on what these awards have meant to our society over the years and to be ready to join together and take part in that evolving legacy this evening. Can we please roll the video? The American Meteorological Society has a deep history of advancing the atmospheric and related sciences, technologies, and services for the benefit of society. Each year at our annual meeting, we celebrate the rich contributions of our members in furthering this mission. With over 35 awards, we recognize the incredible scientists, heroic public servants, masterful communicators, talented innovators, dedicated teachers and mentors, and people with a heart for improving the conditions of our world. For any organization, its awards highlight what that organization values. Our AMS values research and teaching and mentorship, service to society, forecasting, building a diverse workforce, and communicating science to the public. This organization brings together scientists, scholars, teachers, and students in a way that we can reach broader sections of society that get us out of the ivory tower. Operational forecasters work tirelessly to provide the forecast our nation relies on to keep our people safe. Thanks to AMS Forecasting Awards, our community can shine that light on our most deserving forecasters. It is such an honor to be recognized by the AMS for our coverage when it comes to severe weather and just for all the things that we do to try to communicate safety in our community when it comes to weather and science. As our science evolves, so too have our awards. Each year, our story grows as our members continue to expand the boundaries and impact of our work. I sponsor the Earth System Predictability Prize. I hope the Predictability Prize will encourage more research in the predictability of the weather and climate system, because with changes in weather and climate, society needs to know what is in a store. I study how non-English speakers receive, understand, and respond to extreme weather hazards. When I first got my AMS award, it was such a huge, huge moment. It really represented the fact that our field was headed towards a direction where we can embrace multilingualism. I think it's so important that we continue to nominate people of color into these award nominations so that people are better represented and also have a greater statue in the society overall. Everyone who takes the time and effort to nominate someone outstanding is integral to establishing and caring for this legacy. Visit our website to learn more about AMS awards and how to make nominations. It's always an honor to be acknowledged by your peers. What that means is that your peers, they've looked at your work and they respect what you do. As an early career professional, you know, you sometimes have imposter syndrome. It meant the entire world to me when I got my AMS award.
Okay, without further ado, let's begin this year's celebration. I'd like Clay Morad from ARSC Federal to join me on the stage. I'm sure you can imagine this transition that we went through this year requires support. And we are very honored and pleased that ARSC is our federal, is our sort of charter supporter of this award ceremony. So please welcome Clay to the stage. Thank you, Brad. It's an honor to be here tonight, folks. I promise I only have about 10 minutes of uh, toast to give. So good evening, as I said before. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and fellow enthusiasts of weather, water, atmospheric, and climate science, it's a great honor to stand before you tonight as we gather to celebrate the incredible achievements of our esteemed colleagues and welcome new fellows into this distinguished community. At ASRC Federal, we are not just witness to history, we're active partners in the relentless pursuit of knowledge and innovation. Tonight's gathering is a testament to the passion and dedication each of you brings, pushing the boundaries of what we know and paving the way for a more informed and resilient future. Our support for NOAA is not just a partnership, it's a commitment to advancing scientific frontiers, addressing critical environmental challenges, and ensuring the well-being of our planet. As we applaud the accomplishments of tonight's awardees, let us also recognize the collective impact that we have on shaping the narrative of weather, water, and climate science. Together, we are forging new paths, creating a legacy of discovery and progress that will inspire future generations. So let us raise our glasses to those who have gone above and beyond and to those who are embarking on an exciting new journey. May our collective efforts continue to be a beacon of inspiration and a source of positive change. Salute. Thank you, Clay, and thanks to ARSC Federal. And now I'm excited to introduce our award-winning MC for the evening, NBC News meteorologist and environmental reporter, Angie Lassman. Angie. That could have been so bad. <laughs> I guess I know how to make an entrance. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Brad. Good evening, everyone. You all look so so stunning. Um, last year, I was in the audience and I was so honored to be an award winner. This year, I'm equally as honored to be here celebrating all the new award winners for this year at this special event. And if you can believe it, Brad kind of mentioned it, but the AMS has over 35 unique awards. We know some of these may be familiar to you and some less so. So this year, AMS has decided to do things a little different. Tonight, you're gonna to follow a progression of awards in different categories, which can more clearly articulate just what kinds of amazing things all of your colleagues in this room have done. And, and this is important, so that you can think about people you may know who may deserve one of these awards for the future. We need everybody to participate in this. It's so important for you to nominate the people that you are around and are doing good work. Okay. One note, and then we're gonna get right to it. Award winners, when your name is called, you're gonna enter from that side of the stage, and then you'll follow the rest of the directions. It'll be easy, I promise. And without further ado, should we, should we get the party started? Okay. <laughs> All right, our first category is early and mid-career achievement. Starting with early career awards, this year's early career achievement award winner is Gage Kerr. Great job, Gage. <laughs> All right, the Spiros G. Geodis Prize is Anna Van Alstein. If we could all acknowledge her, she's not here, but she deserves a round of applause anyway. <laughs> Next up, the winner of the Meisinger Award is Allison Wing.
The Fuff Enough Award winner is Callum Shakespeare. Callum is not here, but again, round of applause and let's acknowledge him for his great work. Congratulations to all the early career winners. Next up, yeah, you can clap. That's what we're here for, yes. <laughs> All right, next up, we've got the Mid-Career Achievement, and this year's Walter or Roberts Lectureship is awarded to Benjamin Zajcik. <laughs> the Robert Horton Lectureship goes to Hui Lin Ga. And a big congratulations to all of these early and mid-career achievement award winners. One more round of applause for them. Next up, publishing, educating, and reporting. First, we go to our book awards. The Batten Award for Adult is given to Eugene Linden for his work in Fire and Flood, A People's History of Climate Change from 1979 to the Present. <laughs> the Batten Award for K through 12 goes to Theanne N. Griffith for their work, The Magnificent Makers, Storm Chasers. Let's acknowledge her for her great work too. Congratulations to those terrific authors for their contributions. Moving right along, we've got editorial awards. The AMS has several excellent journals, we all know, and we've got a lot of work to do to have those. So for each, it takes many excellent reviewers to ensure the quality of our science meets our highest standards. Among those reviewers, these individuals provided outstanding contributions last year. Our editorial award recipients are David Bodine, Sarah Faye Buckland. Randy Chase. Andrew Feldman. Michael Fisher. <laughs> Michael M. French. Peter Haynes. Aaron Hill. Mimi Hughes. <laughs> Stefan Neifel. <laughs> Sebastian Lurch. <laughs> Rue Look. Luke Muttos. <laughs> Bing Fu. <laughs> Daniel Sanchez Rivas. <laughs> Chow Hung Sun. Lan Wong, and Elizabeth Yankovsky. Thank you so much to our diligent reviewers. 
for all your hard work. We really appreciate it. Congrats, guys. <laughs>
Warren Washington Research Medal is awarded to David Randall. Welcome David to the stage. I want to say a few words about Warren, just briefly. Um, Warren is one of the few uh, distinguished scholars uh, on the NCAR scientific staff, and uh, that title is well deserved. He did many wonderful things, including with uh, Akira Kasahara creating the first NCAR GCM back around 1970. And he's also one of the nicest people uh, I've ever met. Um, and I met him in 1971, at the end of 1971, in his office on the Mesa, in the Mesa lab, when he, uh, he was kind enough to take about an hour to talk with a graduate student uh, about the uh, early science of global modeling. And I remember that meeting vividly, and I felt like I was sort of seeing my own future. So I'm very honored to get this award named after you, Warren, and uh, thank you very much to the AMS. The winner of the Jagadish Shukla Earth System Predictability Prize is Eohenya Kalnai. Please welcome her to the stage. I'm so honored that the AMS has awarded this Shukla prize to me. The aim of this prize is a very important goal in science, and so it is extremely meaningful to me to have received it. I would like to thank all of my brilliant PhD graduates, and I have had over 40 of them, as well as all of my other students for everything that I learned from them. I would like to thank all of my colleagues and friends for all the wonderful years of productive scientific collaboration and support without whom my research would have been impossible. I also want to thank NASA, NOAA, and the University of Maryland, where it was a true honor to have worked most of my life, and which were such incredibly productive scientific homes for my research. Uh, I also want to thank the University of Buenos Aires and MIT for the incredibly good education they gave me. I would also like to thank my son, Jorge Rivas, who has become my colleague and who has helped and guided me for many years. Finally, I would like to thank very much uh, Yagadish Shukla for having created a prize for such an important subject. And I would like to thank the AMS for hosting this prize and awarding it to me. Next up, 
The winner of the David and Lucille Atlas Remote Sensing Prize is Juwan Christine Cheyu. Thank you. Uh, I have to say, this feels great. Uh, <laughs> I'm so honored to be here, and I, like, I really wanted to thank the committee for understanding the value of my research and understanding what I'm doing here. I will continue pushing the boundary, and I will train my students to do so. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my PhD supervisor, Grant Petty, who also got an award this year, and my postdoc supervisor, Warren Wiscombe, and Sasha Marshake. Uh, without their training, I wouldn't know how to write a proposal, and I certainly wouldn't know how to teach British to write English, because they know Shakespeare much better than I do. <laughs> and just like uh, all the professors, without good students, without good postdoc, we are going nowhere. So I really wanted to thank my current and former students and postdoc. Thank you. And thanks all the colleagues and friends at the Colorado State University, University of Reading, Goddard Space Flight Center, ARM community, and the wider community. I thank you all for your support, and for that, I will be always great, grateful. Thank you. Next up, we award the Kenneth C. Spengler Award to Christy Ebai. There were stars for people who could say a few words, but no one said I could. So I'm a surprise. Um, I do want to thank very much the people who worked so hard to get me this nomination. I really appreciate it. It is quite an honor to receive this from AMS. It wasn't that long ago that health just started being on the agenda for AMS. It's been quite a shift over the last 15 years or so. And it's great seeing the board on environment and health, how much they've progressed the numbers of abstracts we get from really excellent researchers. And if you haven't yet, I encourage you to check that out because there's lots that is being learned. We need to do it together. We need to do this in a multidisciplinary way. So join us on our journey for better understanding how weather, climate, and health can better improve the resilience of our societies. Thank you. Next up, we've got this year's Joanne Simpson Tropical Meteorology Research Award, which is given to Yukari Takayabu. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Joanne uh, has been, uh, whom I'm I have been admiring since I started my study of tropical meteorology and related to TRIM and GPM satellite studies. I really appreciate uh, my collaborators, my students, and uh, my friends in US, uh, Japan, US, and around the world. Thank you very much. The Sukaro Manabe Climate Research Award goes to Ronald J. Stouffer. <laughs> Next up, the Helmut E. Landsberg Award is given to David J. Saylor. The award for outstanding contribution to the advance of Applied Met is given to Fred Martin Ralph. Congrats. 
We give the award for Outstanding Achievement in Biometeorology to David Roy Fitzgerald. The Banner I. Miller Award goes to Wei Yu Su. The Carl Gustav Rossby Research Medal is awarded to Benjamin Santer. One game of tennis changed my life. In 1986, during a workshop in Italy, I played tennis in a lunch break. Klaus Hasselmann, the director of the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in Hamburg, walked by and challenged me to a game. After our match, Hasselmann invited me to Hamburg to speak about my PhD research. This led to the offer of a postdoc. Shortly after arriving in Hamburg, Hasselmann gave me his 1979 paper on signal-to-noise analysis. The idea of using pattern information to separate human and natural effects on climate was compelling. What an amazing challenge to fingerprint the climate system. Serendipity, playing a tennis game and reading one scientific paper, changed my life's trajectory. Climate fingerprinting gave me the privilege of working with brilliant women and men around the world. Our research and the work of many others showed that human fingerprints are now ubiquitous. They are all over Earth's climate system. Fingerprint research also took me into the public arena where I was sometimes confronted with tough choices. Should I remain silent when scientific understanding was incorrectly dismissed as a hoax? Or should I speak out against ignorance? I chose to find and use my voice. I'm honored to be this year's recipient of the Rosby Medal. I'm humbled to be in the company of many of my scientific heroes, some of whom, like Susan Solomon, are in the audience today. I'd like to thank Chung Fu and those involved in nominating and selecting me. You took time out of busy lives to do something kind and generous. I'd also like to congratulate all today's honorees and all AMS members who've advanced and communicated our understanding of how and why Earth's weather and climate are changing. Thank you. Next up, the Henry Stommel Research Medal goes to Wu Li San. He's not here, but we have a video acceptance speech. I'm deeply humbled and honored to receive AMS Henry Stom Research Medal. I'm grateful to the AMS and to Professor Susan Avery for the nomination and the colleagues for supporting this nomination. And to my many more scientists who I have pleasure and the privilege to work with in various capacities over many years. Science is a tough effort. Whether your work is on missile scale, sub missile scale ocean activities, interannual and vehicular variability, and a long term change. I have been extremely fortunate to have worked and lead great teams that have devoted effort to study their connection and their impact on the changing climate. I want to thank each one of them and share this award with them. I just won't be here without their great support and their generosity. And a award like this has caused one to reflect. The foundational stage of my career at the Tsinghua University and the Peking University have formally ingrained the value of great team effort. My subsequent 10 year stay in the United States and there in China further reinforced this value. And here I would like thank to give special thanks to my long term collaborators and friends, Dr. Wen Jitai, and many others. In today's work, 
The skill and the magnitude of global issues in front of us mean that our team must be international because no one group and the nation can provide data we need, the observations we require, and the models we must build. Only international effort through international collaboration can move us forward as we rise to resolve these challenges. May this award inspire further commitment to such international collaboration. Finally, I would like to thank my family for their support over the years, without which none of this is possible. Thank you. Next up, the Werner E. Sumi Technology Medal is given to Ernesto Rodriguez. Ernesto is not here, he didn't send a video, but a big congratulations and big applause for him. The Jewel G. Charney Medal is given to Richard Seeger. So thank you very much to everyone who made this possible, the AMS and everyone who did the nominating and, and written the letters. I really very, very much um, appreciate it. Um, it's kind of interesting about this because my advisor um, was Mark Kane, who's here somewhere and still teaches me almost everything I know. His advisor was Jewel Charney, so I feel kind of like I'm an academic grandchild to Jewel Charney. So, um, but in, in terms of um, thanking everyone who's been involved in what has really been a very much a team effort over many decades, my students and postdocs, I hope um, they did a lot, but I hope they're all going to be getting recognized too. I wanted to mention this, the people who work on this who, who never get recognized in events um, like this, and that's the, the people who are running the, who are writing the codes all the time, the people who are running the models, the people who are handling the masses amounts of data, who are plotting the data, and we've had a tremendous group um, at Le Monde over many, many years who have made this work possible, and I wanted to honor them by name. Um, Naomi Henderson, Jennifer Nakamura, Haibo Lu, Kwiwa Lee, Gus Correa, Virginia de Blasi Morris, um, a tireless bunch of workers, and without their behind the scenes work over many decades, the work that is being honored here would not have been um, possible at all. So thank you to them, they made this possible. And thank you very much to the Lamont Dodi Earth Observatory, which has been my academic home um, for all these decades as well. Thank you, Lamont. We've got to do something really quick. So I relied on the prompter, and it scrolled past somebody that is very important and should have been in the earlier part of the celebration. The Houghton Award is given to Yu An Huang. Please give him a big round of applause because he was skipped. Oh. We all make mistakes, right? Do you forgive me? Okay. I hope so. Doesn't have a choice. All right. Finally, the Hydraulic Sciences Medal goes to William Kustis. I'm honored and humbled to be selected to receive this year's Hydrologic Sciences Medal, especially given the class of past recipients I would like to thank my nominator, Martha Anderson, and the supporting letter writers, as well as awards committee members for my selection. Throughout my career with the USDA Agricultural Research Service, I've been involved in remote sensing field experiments focused on the measurement and modeling of the surface energy balance over a variety of natural and, and agricultural landscapes, both in the US and abroad. These have been essential in developing robust remote sensing based evapotranspiration or ET models now being used to improve water management. I'm very thankful to the many researchers involved in these experiments and supported the research. Professor John Norman from the University of Wisconsin had a tremendous impact on my career in the early 90s collaborating on the development 
of the two source energy balance model, which now has reestablished the utility of land surface temperature for modeling ET. Working with ARS and NASA colleagues, Martha Anderson and Chris Hain, who are here at AMS, led to the development of a multi scale modeling system significantly contributing to the resurgence of thermal remote sensing for satellites as a primary tool for ET mapping from field to global scales. This award also belongs to the many students, postdocs, and research colleagues, as well as ARS support staff whom I've had the privilege of working with. I'm very grateful for their contributions recognized by this award. I'm also very thankful for my PhD advisor, Wilfred Brutzart, an honorary member of AMS, who has supported and encouraged me throughout my career. Lastly, I'm truly blessed for the support of my family, my wife Bridget, my three children, who have greatly enriched my life experiences well beyond my scientific pursuits. Thank you all. And now to conclude this wonderful celebration, we'll celebrate members who have made a lasting, important, and generous contributions to our society. First, let's start by inducting our new fellows of the AMS. This year's fellows are Lourdes B. Avales. Cindy L. Bruyere. Edmund Carmen Chung. William D. Collins. Wade T. Crow. Tanya Franson. Michelle D. Hawkins. Kenneth Holmland. Jonathan H. Chiyoung. Gabriel G. Katul. Bronco Kosevich. Yi Yi Lin. Sha Hung Li Yu. Wu Li San. Gretchen L. Molendor. Michael Prather. Wing Chien. A. R. Ravishankara. David W. J. Thompson. Gabriel Andres Becky. Isabella Velaconia. <laughs> Jeff S. Waldstreicher. <laughs> Louis J. Wicker. <laughs> B. 
Bernadette Woods Plackey. And Paquita Zuidema. A big congratulations to all our new fellows. What an accomplishment, congrats everyone. And now, to our most special honorary title, honorary member. It's given to the following three people, which we will get to hear from in turn. First up, congratulations to Mary Glacken. Well, as my fellow awardee said, this feels good, and it feels really great to be up here with Brad. So thank you very much. I'm obviously honored and grateful for this recognition. But frankly, though, it's really been my privilege and pleasure to work in this field and to work with so many of you. It's incredibly important what we do, and it's more important every day. So I want to thank those that have supported me over the years, especially to my family. Um, tonight, I want to spend my couple minute and a half here um, to spend my time speaking of Dr. Dick Hallgren, who recently passed away. Some of you in the audience that are older will know Dick, um, but Dick was a great strategic thinker, and he had a really had a knack for getting things done. It might have involved elbows, I'm not sure. Um, but I want to highlight probably something that's not as well known about Dick and that's his efforts to diversify our field. And I want to underscore that tonight. So in the late 1970s and early 80s, um, Dick was the director of the National Weather Service at that time. And if you think about it, that's when American with Disabilities Act was coming through and there was uh, a really thing, a thing about equal rights going on. And Dick was really responsible for instituting a number of programs that opened pathways for women and minorities at the National Weather Service. Uh, and I was one of those people. He literally created pathways for me to move forward and other people as well. He brought people in that were majoring in math and physics and brought them into atmospheric science. So he brought that same belief to the National Weather Service as he became executive director in fact, he was really responsible for recruiting me here. He sent me a letter when I had gotten some award at NOAA and um, said, you should join. And I thought, I'm a computer scientist. Why would I do that? And, but he brought me in here, and it's one of the best things that ever happened. So as we're here today, I want to say it's been a great meeting, Brad. Congratulations. And I don't think we've ever had a me meeting that's been as open and inclusive as this one. And I was at the women's luncheon today. It was so fabulous to see so many women in our field that are so capable and moving forward. But we know that we don't have a diverse workforce the way we need to meet the challenges that are ahead of us. It's kind of not an optional thing. We need to do this, and we're working on it. But I want to invite, as I leave the stage, I want to invite each of you to think a little bit like Dick Hallgren tonight and ask yourself, how can you make your workplace more open and welcoming to all? And by the way, who can you invite to join AMS that isn't a member? Thank you. Next up, we congratulate honorary member Celeste Saulo. Uh, well, 
Yes, this feels good, good indeed. Dear friends and esteemed members of the American Meteorological Society, today, I, as I stand before you, my heart is full of gratitude for the profound honor of being named an honorary member of this renowned society. The American Meteorological Society has long stood as a pillar of excellence and as a beacon of inspiration in our field. To be recognized today by the AMS is not solely a personal achievement, but a symbolic triumph of those hailing from developing countries where access to opportunities is often a strenuous endeavor. I believe that such recognition transcends borders, barriers, and people, serving as a powerful catalyst for change. As an honorary member, I am hopeful that my journey can inspire young minds from all parts of the world and science, sorry, to pursue their passion for meteorology and science at large. Please allow me to take this opportunity to acknowledge those that had made this journey possible. From the public and free education system in my homeland, Argentina, the University of Buenos Aires, to mentors that inspired me, but also held my hand and opened doors to me and to many colleagues from different parts of the world, like Eugenia Galney, who has been awarded today. To my colleagues, co-workers, and students in Argentina and worldwide, and of course, to my family, whose love and support has been key to overcome key challenges. Throughout my career, from the early days of my scientific exploration to my current role as Secretary General of the, w of the World Meteorological Organization, I have always believed in the strength of our collective mission. This honor, therefore, resonates deeply with me as it symbolizes the unity and collaborative spirit that is so vital in our quest to understand and protect our ever-changing environment. In the face of the environmental challenges that confront our world, our role as scientists, communicators, and advocates for the planet has never been more crucial. We are the voice of the Earth atmosphere, oceans, water, bridging the gap between scientific understanding and the well-being of our communities. Therefore, I accept this honor not only on my behalf, but on behalf of the entire meteorological community whose unwavering passion and expertise drive the essence of our work. Thank you, AMS, for this award that fills me with immense gratitude and even greater motivation to persist in our collective mission to explore, understand, and protect our planet and its inhabitants. Thank you very much. And last, but certainly not least, definitely not in my book, please welcome my mentor, my friend, and now honorary member, John Tui Morales. Oh my goodness, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations to all the RRDs tonight, especially of the two distinguished colleagues who just preceded me here on stage. I am obviously immensely grateful and humbled to be exalted uh, to honorary member. Now, it did take me a while to come to grips with how I could possibly deserve this immense honor, but then I did remember how important representation is. After all, soy Puerto Riqueño. And I have worked hard to forge a path for Latinx professionals 
uh, in our field as the first ever degreed meteorologist in Spanish language television in the U.S. I was thrust into the spotlight uh, only a year into my tenure with Category 5 Hurricane Andrew hitting uh, south of Miami. And then suddenly, after this happened, all Spanish language stations, Miami and elsewhere, were looking for degreed meteorologists. And soon enough, middle and high schoolers were calling me in the newsroom expressing their passion for weather and wanting to join the Meteorologos de Barrio initiative relaying their daily rainfall reports to me so that I could put them on air. Uh, so uh, I worked with the AMS to fund a minority scholarship through uh, Climate Data, my little tiny boutique weather firm. And I'm proud to say, though, that uh, scholarship recipients are today our colleagues working in both the public and private sectors. Dozens of others followed, and now both the Spanish and general market newscasts have Hispanic, degreed meteorologists on their staff. Now, there are too many uh, to thank for helping me uh, achieve this incredible honor. Uh, first among them, my wife, uh, Carmen, uh, my son, John Michael, uh, and the rest of my family. And second, this great society, the AMS, which helped me spread my wings in the science and also flock with the community at large. I have to thank Jose Colon, meteorologist in charge and my first boss at the National Weather Service in San Juan where I started my career. He gave me the courage to, uh, you know, to become a meteorologist. I mean, back in those days, in the 1970s, hardly any of us in Puerto Rico were thinking of pursuing that career and now we have all of you guys, my goodness, look at how many are pr pursuing the career. Also, I have to thank my alma mater, Cornell University, with its founding, <laughs> its founding principle of providing instruction to any person in any study. Cornell showed me what it takes to be successful, hard work, resilience, and perseverance at a time when institutions of higher learning are under assault, I couldn't be prouder to be living proof that diversity, equity, and inclusion leads to great outcomes in doing the greatest good. Thank you. If anyone wants John's autograph, I can give you one for a price. <laughs> Thank you all so much for attending this event. I hope you enjoyed yourself. When we gather to elevate the achievements of our outstanding members, we affirm what we as a, as a society value. And we celebrate how far these extraordinary efforts have brought us. May we leave tonight inspired in our own paths, inspired to look for the great contributions of those around us, and remember what a wonderful community we are a part of. Thank you for having me. It was an honor. I enjoyed it. Now I'll toss it back to Brad. Yes, great, yeah. Thank you, Angie, so much. Super job. Indeed, this is a wonderful community. I, I think that you look back, we, these are people, these are stories that we can't forget. I mean, this is our family, our community, and they played a huge part in getting us to where we are today. So now I'm going to challenge all of you, and that is, let's go that next step. Each of you, the awards process starts with you. AMS doesn't go out and pick these people. We need your, your nominations. So someone you're sitting next to, someone you worked with, they probably deserve to be up here on the stage. So think about that. And, and don't just put the thought in the back of your mind. You can submit the words applications now, go online, figure it out. Let's get a lot of nominations for next year's award ceremony, make it even better next year. This was an amazing award ceremony today. So thank you all. So 
one final round of applause for all the awardees for tonight. And so now you're welcome to head over to Wednesday Night Live, which is over in the Hilton, and have a great evening. Thank you so much.